On June 29, 2009, Stephen Hawking sent out a public invite to a pretty unusual event he had planned. The invitation said, You are cordially invited to a reception for time travelers, hosted by Professor Stephen Hawking, to be held at the University of Cambridge, Cornville and Keys College, Trinity Street, Cambridge. No RSVP required. The twist? The party had already happened the day before. Hey there, I'm Dr. Panda, your friendly, fuzzy PhD holder, and today we're diving into the quirky story of the party Stephen Hawking threw exclusively for time travelers. On June 28, 2009, Hawking decided to run a little experiment nobody else knew about. He rented a room at Cambridge University, decked it out with balloons, champagne, and snacks, and waited. And he waited. And waited some more. After hours of no one showing up, he turned off the lights and went home. The next day, Hawking made the invitations public, sending them to various U.S. newspapers. Along with this, he explained that nobody had shown up and shared his belief that the results of the experiment suggested that time travel might not be possible. After all, if it were, wouldn't at least one time traveler have appeared? But what if there's more to it than that? Could there be other reasons why Hawking's party was such a flop? I think there are. Let's start with the simplest ones. First of all, we can't ignore the possibility that potential time travelers just weren't interested in the party. Maybe they were introverts. Maybe they were already in their pajamas and decided to stay in bed. Maybe Hawking served Coke and their Pepsi people. Who knows? Another possibility is that they didn't even know the party happened. After the event, Hawking said that he hoped the invitation might last for years and that one day, someone living in the future will find the information and use a wormhole time machine to come back to the party, proving that time travel will one day be possible. But what if the invitation simply didn't survive? What if they just didn't make it far enough to reach people that have access to time travel? For all we know, some ancient Greek or Egyptian might have done the same experiment, writing invitations on papyrus that got lost in time and were never found by us. It's also possible that time travel exists, that travelers knew about Hawking's party, and even wanted to attend but still didn't. Why? There could be a strict organization governing time travel, or perhaps, potential travelers are aware of the significant risks of traveling to the past. And of course, there's the multiverse theory, which suggests that even if time travelers from the future came to visit Hawking, they might have visited a variant of him from a parallel universe instead of ours since according to this theory, the past cannot be altered. Similarly, there's always the possibility that in the future, Stephen Hawking simply isn't as relevant or popular as he is in our time. It's possible that thousands or even tens of thousands of years from now, people might see him as just another figure from the past, or they might not even know who he was at all. Okay, with that out of the way, we can dive into the more intriguing explanations related to time travel paradoxes. The consistency paradox, also known as the grandfather paradox, happens when a time traveler makes a change to the past that directly prevents the possibility of the time travel occurring in the first place, creating a contradiction. The classic example is, what would happen if a time traveler went back in time and killed their grandfather when he was a baby? This would mean the traveler's parent could never be born, and therefore, the traveler himself wouldn't exist, causing a time contradiction. What if it's precisely the fact that no one showed up to Hawking's party that motivates the future discoverer of time travel to figure it out? In this scenario, if someone had attended the party using time travel, it would create a consistency paradox because the person who eventually discovers time travel in the future wouldn't have the motivation to do so, leading to time travel never being discovered at all. Here's a variation of that scenario. What if it turns out a time traveler actually shows up to the party? They speak with Stephen Hawking, telling him about the future they came from, maybe even showing him the technology they use for traveling. However, as a condition, they ask Hawking not to tell anyone about their meeting. So, the astrophysicist never sends out the invitations, nor he reveals that he organized the party, meaning no one in the future finds out the event ever took place. This would cause the traveler who visited Hawking in the first place to never learn about the party, which means they can't travel back in time to attend it, creating a contradiction. Let's make it even more interesting. 
What if the time traveler attends Hawking's party and provides him with all the necessary information about how their time machine works? Armed with this knowledge, Hawking manages to create the first time traveling artifact in history. What would happen then? Well, this would lead to what's known as the bootstrap paradox. This paradox occurs when an action, piece of information, person, or object causes itself as a result of time travel. A great example of this can be found in the movie Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home, where a 23rd century engineer travels back in time and gives a formula for transparent aluminum to the 20th century engineer who was supposed to have invented it. In the case of Hawking's party, this would mean that there's no point of origin for the creation of the time machine. Even though Hawking might have built the first device of its kind in history, he could only do so because the time traveler already had one. Therefore, the time machine would exist without ever having been created, causing a contradiction. While we can't yet know the truth about time travel, pondering the vast possibilities it presents is always an intriguing exercise. Regardless, Stephen Hawking didn't give up after this experiment. Following his passing, people could apply for an invitation to his memorial service via the official website of the Stephen Hawking Foundation. The application form asked for the applicant's year of birth, with options extending all the way to 2038. This was done in the hope that perhaps a time traveler from the near future might attend. Unfortunately, no one showed up for this final attempt either. So, why do you think no one attended Hawking's party? Do you believe time travel is simply not possible, or is there a more intriguing explanation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. In 1961, a scientist set out to conduct an experiment with one simple goal, to assess how much harm a person is willing to inflict on another just because an authority figure orders them to. The results were chilling. Want to know the story? Click on this video.